Good morning, Oakwood. My name is Griffin. And I'm Grace. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd. During the COVID-19 social distancing time, the Axe TV crew will be releasing the show every Wednesday to entertain and inform the Oakwood community. This week's show starts with a story from Lily about COVID-19 policies around the world. COVID-19, or better known as the coronavirus, is spreading through our world and causing a great deal of problems. Just as quickly as the virus is spreading, different countries are creating policies to isolate the spread. China, for example, standing with over 80,000 cases, has locked down entire cities. Citizens have not been able to leave their apartments unless they get police permission. They started virus testing months ago and have even built hospitals for the overflow of patients. Moving out west, Italy has reported more than 115,000 cases, but they have taken similar precautions as locking down cities and public gatherings have been banned and sporting events have even been suspended. Taking after these countries' policies, places like Germany, Iran, Spain, and France have also canceled schools and main events, as well as flights outside of the country. But leading the world in over 550,000 cases of COVID-19, the U.S. is taking many measures as a nation and as separate states. California has mentioned a state lockdown in late March, closing all non-essential stores. A state as large as ours, a nation state, uh, is many parts, but at the end of the day, we're one body. There's a mutuality and there's a recognition of our interdependence that requires of this moment that we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. This policy has showed signs of decline in the COVID-19 cases in California. As cases have spread so greatly in the U.S., many are calling Ohio the leading state to take measures after. As cases started to spread in early March, Ohio took quick action to close down schools until May. Dr. Acton just signed a stay-at-home order for all Ohioans. They have also closed non-essential companies and have asked all to stay inside and stay safe. As the virus continues to spread and policies change, we advise to stay in, stay safe, and help stop the spread of COVID-19. This has been Lily reporting for Axe TV. And I made an animation about the coronavirus timeline. The coronavirus is something that we are all becoming more and more acquainted with, but the story of how it started and how we ended up in the situation we're in goes back a whole two years, not just to December 2019. On February 9, 2018, President Trump signed a bill cutting $1.35 billion in funding for the Prevention and Public Health Fund at the CDC. This was part of the Affordable Care Act. On May 7, 2018, the National Security Council's director, Luciana Borio, stated that the threat of a pandemic flu is the number one health security concern. The following day, Trump removed the top officials within the National Security Council who were responsible for pandemic response and the global health security team, and he did not replace their positions. On September 18, 2018, Trump issued a presidential memorandum and national biodefense strategy, within which it is identified that the U.S. needed to establish manufacturing surge capacities for diagnostic tests and personal protection equipment in anticipation of a pandemic. One year later, in October 2019, the administration finished a seven-month-long simulation named Crimson Contagion to test our preparedness. The results said that the Health and Human Services is underprepared, underfunded, and undercoordinated. The simulation was eerily similar to the one we are now facing, it having been a fictitious respiratory virus originating from China. Not even one month later, on November 17, 2019, the first coronavirus case supposedly happened in the Hubei province, according to Chinese government documents, though the accuracy of this date is unknown. In late November, early December, U.S. intelligence agencies warned of a grave disease outbreak in Wuhan, China, but most of this information was known only within the U.S. government. On December 30, 2019, a Chinese doctor spread the word within his medical community about the existence of the coronavirus and the gravity of the situation. The day after, Wuhan government officials confirmed that they had found dozens of cases of a new pneumonia of unknown origin. Throughout January 2020, the American government began taking precautions, forming a task force, and acknowledged that the new virus was likely to spread across the world. 
On January 3rd, Chinese officials formally alerted the CDC director about the virus. Four days later, on January 7th, the CDC formed their incident management system for the new coronavirus and activated their 2019 NCOV incident management structure. On January 9th, 2020, China publicly identified the virus. Throughout mid-January, the Health and Human Services began making plans to enact the Defense Production Act to urge companies to begin production of personal protective equipment and needed supplies. On January 17th, the U.S. implemented health screenings on all incoming flights from Wuhan, China, into San Francisco, New York, and Los Angeles. Three days later, on January 20th, 2020, we announced our first case in Washington State. This was the same day that South Korea reported theirs. On January 22nd, China completely cut off the city of Wuhan, and Trump stated that the pandemic is totally un under control. It's only one person coming in from China. The day after we received information from the World Health Organization about transmission rates, human-to-human -human transmission possibilities, and the severity of the virus. In detail, they stated the basic reproduction rate is 1.4 to 2.5. The source is most likely animal, and they also said that 25% of cases will be severe. On January 30th, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross stated in a Fox interview that the coronavirus will be good for the U.S. economy, Secretary of the Human Health Services, Azar, directly warned Trump that the virus could morph into a pandemic, but Trump discounted this warning as an alarmist, then proceeded to host a campaign rally in Iowa. That same day, Trump restricted entry into the U.S. from China, but it included many exemptions, allowing tens of thousands of passengers to continue entering the country. Mike Pompeo announced on February 7th, the U.S. had donated 18 tons of medical supplies to China, including masks, gowns, gauze, respirators, and more. In mid-February, some senators sold many major stock holdings valued more than $2 million, indicating that they knew information beforehand and used it for their own personal benefit. At that same time, the coronavirus began to spread and strengthen in New York, having originated from Europe. On February 29th, President Trump assured the public that the stock market was starting to look very good, despite the fact that the Dow Jones was in decline and would fall nearly 10,000 points over the following month. On March 2nd, 2020, President Trump claimed that a vaccine will be readily available, and four days later claimed that anybody who wants to get a test can get a test, despite it still being very difficult for most of the population to get a test. On March 10, 2020, Vice President Pence announced that over 1 million tests have been distributed and that 4 million would be distributed by the end of the week. Not one day later, on March 11th, the World Health Organization declared coronavirus a global pandemic. On March 13th, Trump declared a state of emergency. Then three days later, he put social distancing guidelines in place. On March 19th, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine canceled school in Ohio and has since limited almost all interaction. That same day, on March 19th, the CDC instructed medical professionals how to use homemade masks if PPE is not available. Later that day, Trump stated that it is the state's responsibility to provide PPE, saying, in quote, The federal government is not supposed to be out there buying vast amounts of items and then shipping. You know we're not a shipping clerk. Towards the end of March, hospitals reported severe shortages, and pictures began going viral of hospital workers wearing trash bags and homemade masks. At the same time, 6.6 .6 million Americans filed for unemployment, bringing the total to over 10 million Americans. On April 2nd, Trump blamed the state's governors again for short supply, and Jared Kushner said that the national stockpile is not for state use, and that they have their own responsibilities. The following morning, this national stockpile website was changed to be more in line with what the Kushner said, and the Trump administration announced that they will be using the Defense Production Act to make N95 masks and ventilators, as the Human Health Services had urged of them four months past. In early April, states claimed that FEMA seized PPE supplies from hospitals in several states, but FEMA adamantly denied this. On April 6, coronavirus became the leading cause of death within the United States. On April 8, state governors created a multi-state consortium to handle the distribution of PPE. On April 9, HHS spokeswoman Ms. McCaugh stated that the national stockpile has only about 10% left, leaving states with a feeling of being completely alone in this hard situation. 
Though things might not be as great as we'd like them to be, we must acknowledge that the, rate are, the rates are leveling out and that we are lower than we expected to be here in Ohio. And though the Trump administration is being held accountable for any mistakes made, they are also the only people in charge right now, and everybody makes mistakes. All we can do is work together to defeat this, and please do your part by staying home. Information in this story comes from the LA Times, New York Times, Fox News, NBC, NPR, and JustSecurity.com, a division of the New York University Law School. This has been Griffin for Axe TV. And our show wouldn't be the same without Sam and RJ's joke of the week. <gasps> Sam! RJ! All right, say, RJ, say Yo. you. Oh my God. Yo. What's up? RJ, how you do? I, dude, I mean, you know, I'm getting there. It's just, it's been crazy, you know, these last couple weeks, you know, all on the, I don't know. I mean, it's been crazy since I've seen you last. I just really need one of those pick-me-ups. Uh, one of those, uh, that copy, what, what's the, what's the, uh, the name it is? It's, uh. RJ's joke of the week. week. Uh, well, you know, I miss you. I miss you too, man. I got it. I got one for you, though. Oh, you do. What time do uh? Yeah, let's see. What time do ducks wake up? Uh, I don't know. How am I supposed to know when ducks wake up? At the quack of dawn. (laughs) Oh, like crack it, like at the. I guess. Oh my okay. God, RJ! Wow. RJ Plunkett! Wow! Wow! So you got me! You got me! You caught me! Yeah. You caught me off guard! Wow! That is funny! Oh my God! You just made my week. It's only Monday, and you already made my week, RJ. Well, you made my week too, Sam. All right. Well, goodbye. Have a good day, Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to check your emails and Google Classroom regulars. Stay healthy, Oakwood. See you next week.